tonight on the Comic Book Girl 19 show. You hate DC! Man, the last half of this film was exhausting, not getting the character of Superman right. Oh my gosh, you can't say that. Comic Book Girl goes under fire for her controversial opinions of the DC movies. Masculine dumpster fire. Fucked it up from the fucking get-go. It's killing me inside. There ain't no explaining that plot. Things can go out of hand really fast. You hate DC. I mean, it's fascinating. I mean, it's, it's just a train wreck. This is what they do with it? Ooh. You hate DC. This is what they do with it? You're going to be drinking heavily. How do people not say this? And it earned that 26%. It's just sad. Like, I don't even want to make fun of them. What is Warner Brothers going to do? Now it's time for Comic Book Girl to face the piper. I need to make a public apology. <laughs> Today on the show, we're talking Wonder Woman. How did you feel about it? Um. You hated it, didn't you? So you just got back from seeing Wonder Woman. I did, and. The uh, fourth DC movie. Yeah, I. And I really... Um, I know how you thought about Wonder Woman. Well, I... <laughs> My friend Bobo said that you hated Wonder Woman because you hate all the DCEU movies. Your friend Bobo, huh? He's yeah. Been talking to that asshole again. So you hated it, right? Um, no, I didn't hate it. <laughs> what? Believe it or not, believe it or not, uh, I enjoyed a DCEU movie. First, first one since, like, Nolan times. What? Oh, wow. Well, sorry to disappoint you, Bobo. But I thought Wonder Woman was good. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, right? So weird. Well, he's not going to believe this. I mean, I, I don't know what he's going to believe. But I can tell you uh, that I believe that the DCEU, Warner Brothers, they finally made a decent movie. I'm happy for them. I'm excited. It was a real movie. You know? It wasn't just a montage like that last one I saw. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Well, I was on Collider Heroes comments board and they all said that you hate dc they sure do fuck <laughs> if it's on the internet it's true they don't like me over there why is that because <laughs> i don't like the dc movies <laughs> what about catwoman <laughs> well, you love, didn't like catwoman i love catwoman i mean halle berry is catwoman wait you love catwoman well, yeah, not because it's good, but because it's a masterpiece of <laughs> fucking campy, awesome filmmaking. It's just total shit. With, like, big-name actresses in it. It's like, Halle Berry, what are you doing? Like, I cringe for Halle Berry. I cringe for... I'm embarrassed for her. But at the same time, it's a just punishment for what she did to Storm. So. Well, nobody on the internet is gonna believe this. This movie worked for me. This movie was good. <laughs> The gods made the Amazons to restore peace to the world. And it's what I'm going to do. What was it about? Wonder Woman is an origin movie about Wonder Woman. You have her uh, thinking about her past after Batman sends her this old photograph. And it's all about the first act. You see her, she's growing up, and then she meets a dude for the first time, learns about the world of men. Second act, they leave the Themyscira mystical island. They go to like the trenches of World War I where she learns about how fucked up war is and how fucked up people are. And then in the third act, she ends up finding this god of war named Ares that she's been talking about the whole film. And then they get in this big battle and then it's over. And then that's the movie. <laughs> and overall, it worked pretty well. The third act, eh, but the, the first, I like the first two acts a lot. Wow, maybe you did like it. Well, I'll tell you the thing that I liked most about this movie is that I felt like this movie had a lot of sincerity going on. It was a very sincere movie. It had things that it wanted to say. What's that mean? Um, well, it was genuine. It's like you finally have a hero, Wonder Woman, who actually like gives a shit about people and wants to stop wars and wants to like help this town and you know it's just like this whole thing like she just cannot deal with all this fucked up shit and she wants to help but then you know as she goes along she finds out that things are not as black and white as they seem you know she goes from being a very idealistic girl to uh becoming more of a woman of the world you know learning more about our world uh, by the end of it i like that the genuineness the sincerity of her character you know I thought I, I felt it. 
It is our sacred duty to defend the world. And it's what I'm going to do. This movie has a theme of integrity, where it's talking about doing what you know in your heart is right, despite what other people are telling you. You know, other people are like, yeah, whatever. And you're like, no, I got to do this. And I think that that's pretty awesome. And this was exemplified in the scene where they finally get Diana to the front lines. They're in the trenches. She's stopped by this woman who's like, help, my town is like across the border. Like shit's fucked up. And Diana's just like horrified by the story this woman's telling her. And she stops Steve and the guys and she's like, dude, we gotta fix this. This sucks. He was like, I know baby girl, but like we gotta keep our eyes on the big picture. We can't deal with this. That's no man's land. That means that no man has been able to cross it for like, you know, a year or 18 months. And she's like, wait a minute, like no man's land. Well, maybe none of y'all men's can go across it, but I fucking can. And so she's like, sorry, squad. Like, I gotta fucking, I gotta deal with this fam. Like, this is happening right now. She pops out and she like goes across. And like, it was so like, I felt like action wise that this was like the peak of the movie where she's like taking all this fire while the dudes are like coming up behind her and like sniping the guys and they end up liberating the whole town. And it was just like, so glorious, you know? And it's like, I love that. I love it because every now and then it's like, you can't fight every fight, you know? Cause if you did, you're just gonna destroy yourself. But like every now and again, like there's something that props up that like you have to deal with and it's your turn to deal with some shit. And this was her turn. And she was like, I'm doing this. And she fucking did it. It was awesome. What do you think of Gal Gadot? Gal Gadot? Is that how you say it? I don't know. Nobody knows. There's like five different ways to fucking say that one. No thanks. Uh, so. What do yeah. you think of Chris Pine? <laughs> Hold on. Hashtag Chris Pine. Okay. Chris Pine? I thought Chris Pine did a great job. I thought that this was a perfect role for him. I was really proud of my boy. I've been watching him since like Star Trek, the first, I really loved that first Star Trek movie and I was so excited and then like the other two kind of sucked, but whatever. But you liked him here? I did, I thought he was perfect in this role. I thought he's, his comedic timing was actually really amazing. My favorite Steve Trevor scene was on the boat. I laughed out loud. Him and Diana, they're leaving the mascara, they're going to Europe and they're getting ready to bed down for the night on this little teeny boat, you know, and he's trying to be the gentleman and do the proper thing and not sleep next to her because he does have a boner for her and he like, is like, oh, I shouldn't get over there. But she's naive and is like kind of interested in boys anyways. So she's like, well, why don't you come sit over here? And he's like, well, I shouldn't, nah. And she's like, well, uh, there's room for two. Like, why are you being a weirdo? And then he's like, well, fine, fine. And I thought their, their back and forth was really good. It was really well done. It was an adorable setup for them laying next to each other on the boat. And you know, they're talking about like, well, how much do you know about, you know, the birds and the bees kind of situation. And she's like, well, I've read 12 volumes about the pleasures of the flesh, like written by this lady. And he's like, well, what does she say? And, and she says that the books conclude that men are necessary for like conception, but that they're not necessary for pleasure. And his sadness, and the disappointment and like all of these emotions just came out when he was just like, he's just like, no, no, like, no. <laughs> he's just like, he's so, it was so perfect, that line delivery. Those two no's, I laughed out loud. Comic book girl. Yeah. Did you see the gif online of Chris Pine and Gal Gadot? Oh, I did actually. I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. What's he talking about? <laughs> There's this clip online, uh, Gal and Chris are at some junket and he's talking and she like catches herself. She's like giving him like googly eyes while he's talking like, oh, I heart you shit. And uh, she catches herself and corrects herself and is like, oh shit, I'm married. <laughs> like I should be like, I need to not do this on fucking camera right now. And uh, it was great. I thought that the romance in this movie was really well done. Romance? Yeah, there was romance in there. And I was into, I was totally into it. What romance? Well, so in the comic books, Steve Trevor is the first man that Diana meets, you know? So, I mean, they have him in this movie. And like before, like when I was, whenever I saw him in the comics or like heard about him or whatever, I was like, he seems lame. Like I always looked at pictures of him and was like, no, that guy's not the one. But then like in the movie with Chris Pine playing Steve Trevor, I was like, oh, 
Like, I get it. Like, all right. Like, I, I, yeah. If I were her, I would, I, yeah, I'd be into that. Particularly, uh, I also love that scene where he's in the hot tub. He's getting out, you know, and he's like, just like, balls out in front of Diana, you know, just like, hey, well, you don't care. So here it is. Check it out. It was hot. And uh, <laughs> I wish I got to see his butt, but whatever. They're in the hot tub. Diana, and, and she's like, hey, are you like, what dudes would you say that normal dudes look like? You know, are you indicative of your type? And he's like, well, I'm above average. <laughs> like he, and he's like, it was, his delivery of that line was really great. I was like, yes. Like, yes, you are Chris Pine. I will say this was one of my criticisms for the film. So her and him, I guess, have sex. I guess Chris Pine takes her V card after the, uh, yeah. After the, the no man's land incident, because oh. after you liberate a whole town, it's like, that's, I mean, come on, you guys are alone. Like you guys faced death. Like now's the time to, so we did do it to create a little life, you know, some of that, yes. some of that business. But, uh, but I was a little disappointed because it's like, you just, you have them in a room and then you think he might leave, but then he closes the door behind him. And then I guess you see him go to kiss her or you see him kiss her or something. And then it fades off. And then it's like the next morning and it like cuts to outside and then it cuts to the next morning and everyone just gets up and they're like, okay, hey, time to go. And like, nobody makes a joke or like has a comment or says anything. And like Chris and her don't like look at each other in a certain, you know, like there was no confirmation. And I just felt like cheated. I felt fucking cheated. Cause it's like, you got this fucking romance and then all I'm gonna get is like one smooch and then whatever. And then nobody ever talks about it again. It's like, come on, like there should be, like, I mean, you know that that chick is like, it's everyone's gonna hear it in that little inn. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like it would. You wanted a humping scene? Well, I mean, you don't necessarily have to have a humping scene, but I, I mean, a little bit's fine, whatever, but like, I would want to hear some joke by one of their homies in the squad. And they're like, oh, hey, you know, and make some little one of these. And then they're like, oh, flustered. And then it's, and then you, that's it, you know? But we didn't get that. It was really vague. You wanted to see them both blush? Yeah, I did. I did want to see them both blush. You know, I thought it would be really, it'd be really cute. Tell me about Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Uh, she did a great job in this movie. Uh, I liked that she was able to effortlessly go between being this kind of idealistic, doe-eyed, naive, you know, girl to this fierce fucking woman who like gets shit done, you know? It's like she did really good with her facial expressions there. I really like was sold on all that. Although I'm a little sad that I don't think I'll see more of that, you know, naive, idealistic Diana in these next movies, which is the one that I liked more, you know? Like I like that I don't know, I, my idealism is also my flaw at certain times. So I, I identify with, I like that about her. I like that vulnerability about her, you know? Cause I like, she's so invincible. So it's really good for her character, but we'll see. You have some client plates about the arms for something. I, I, here's my nitpick, my number one fucking nitpick, but it just pisses me off, okay? Get it out. When I think of Wonder Woman, I think of fucking muscles. Like she is a very imposing figure. Okay, like if, like, I feel like I should feel intimidated if she's standing in front of me, you know, as a stick girl. I, I feel like I want a girl that's imposing physically. And I didn't feel like old gal did enough push ups, you know. I'm not against her being in the role, but I, I wish that she would get some guns, you know what I'm saying? Cause like all those extras on the island, like they were fucking built, you know, and it's like when every, when all the extras have more muscles than Wonder Woman, cause I feel like in a lot of these movies, the women have no muscle tone and it's like, I wanna see, like, I just remember very vividly when I watched Terminator 2, not to say she's gotta look like Sarah Connor from Terminator 2, but like, I was like, fuck. Like when I saw her punch someone, I fucking believed it, you know? Cause look, look, I got fucking stick arms, okay? I hurt myself when I punch people. That's who I hurt. Not the other person. Myself gets hurt when I punch other people. Is it's that how pathetic. you got that bruise? Uh, no, I was giving blood, but whatever. It's pathetic. <laughs> like, it's not heroin, I promise. Um, oh, I knew you were a junkie. <laughs> you saw this movie high. <laughs> yeah. I would have been sleeping through it if it was heroin. Um, yeah, like. Fraudulent review. <laughs> it's, uh, fuck, where was I? Shit. The heroin kicking in. <laughs> Your heroin's kicking in. <laughs> Can't remember things. I gotta say one more thing about her arms, okay? She looks like Hugh Jackman did in the first X Men movie. Go back and look at like how fucking soft Hugh Jackman is in that first movie. I hope that she 
she decides for the next movie to like do some of these, some of these, some of these. I don't see you doing some of these. I know, I'm a fucking asshole, I need to do them. But the thing is, I've had those before for cosplay shoots. Like when there's a cosplay shoot and my arms need to look good, like you better fucking believe I'm doing push-ups and like curls and all that other fucking bullshit, okay? And it's not hard. You can get arm, she's so skinny. Like you can build the muscle so fast. She has access to trainers. She has access to like fucking all sorts of shit. Nutritionists, like everything. Like she was in the fucking army. Like do some push-ups. Like I, she just looks so skinny. She looked good. No. You're just jealous. I mean. You're just jealous. Cause no. you got baby thighs, son. <laughs> Shut up. I need a reason to like get pumped. You know, I don't have one You're right You're just now. full of excuses and want to complain about everybody else but you. Look, I'm not playing Wonder Woman right now. Okay, so like. That's right. No one's casting your baby thighs. Whatever. Dude, but you know, if I got casting role, I wouldn't fuck around and I would get that shit done. Have you got it out yet? <laughs> yeah, I think so. What do you think about the fight scenes and action in the movie? Uh, overall, the action was pretty decent. As I said earlier, I think the action sequence where she's in no man's land and she's, you know, behind her shield and all those fucking bullets are coming at her, like that was really sick. And then also when she's like fighting a bunch of like German soldiers, you know, there's like a bunch in a room and she's like fighting them all and like, you know, kicks one out of a window and stuff like that. I like, I liked that a lot better than like the ending fight scene. I wasn't a fan of that. I felt like it was. What? Why not? I mean, it was, he was, uh, there's so many reasons. No, it was awesome. No. I mean, there's just like all the lightning and oh, all, the, all the shit flying. I mean, I, I just hate all the shit flying around. All the, I don't care. It's just. Maybe people that do heroin don't like action. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe it is a downer. I love the scene where Diana follows Steve into that room when they get back to London and there's all those politicians and they're all arguing, you know? And uh, she starts talking to this fucking, this asshole general who's like, whatever, we can afford to lose this many men. And she's like, disgusted, you know, disgusted of how he just doesn't give a shit about human lives, you know, that he's just wasting, you know, and she's just like, you should be ashamed, like, you should be ashamed, like, you're a fucking coward, and I was like, yeah, she's, she's putting, like, words, like, she's, yeah, I would love to do that at some point in my life, that's pretty great. I will say, I did, I didn't trust that politician dude from the beginning. I was like, no, never trust a politician. He's like, oh, I'm just gonna help you guys. Here's a bunch of money. Oh, you can run your operations from my place. It's like, dude, that guy's trying to keep tabs on you. Like that guy has a fucking agenda. Like he's a fucking politician. Those are slippery motherfuckers. And you know what? The God of War would not be out on a battlefield. He would be a politician dicking everything up. I'm excited for director Patty Jenkins. She uh, broke some records. Biggest debut for female director this weekend on opening weekend. That's this was directed by a girl? Yes, it was, yes. And, uh, and I think that DC, they hired a good director and they let her do something, you know? Like I felt bad for like David Ayer's A Suicide Squad because like they hired a good director but they didn't let him do something. And so with this, like it didn't, felt, it felt good. Are you excited for her doing future DC movies? Well, I'm really excited to see if she helms the new Wonder Woman 2 movie that they just greenlit. They're definitely gonna do Wonder Woman 2, so I really hope to see her back. Would you be happy to see her do future bigger DC movies such as a Justice League sequel? Well, I don't wanna put her in that position necessarily because that's, that's a hard one. But for Wonder Woman, I think she was great. I wanna see her direct Wonder Woman 2. Uh, they've greenlit it, so I wanna see her come back and direct for that. It's not on her IMDb yet, so it's not official, but I assume. <laughs> So after the success that Wonder Woman has been, I mean, it's been a huge success so far, uh, I hope that Warner Brothers going forward takes some lessons from Wonder Woman and sees like, you know, realizes the things that are working in Wonder Woman and tries to put some of those things in their upcoming movies. Because I feel like with this movie, it really had something to say. It had themes, uh, it had ideas in it. It broached complex topics. We had a character, we understand where she's coming from, what her motivations are, you know? We see her grow like through her idealism and learn to like, you know, see the world for what it is and still love it all the same. You know, there's a lot of like interesting stuff going on in there that is, makes you like the character. And I hope that they just try to focus on building, you know, strong characters, have themes in your movies. I love how this movie has, talks about like the complexities of war. 
you know, and that Diana doesn't, isn't right. Like her idealism, she's kind of right, but she's not like 100% right. And the same thing is true with Steve. Like he's kind of right, but he's not 100% right. But together, like they both figure it out and they need each other to like fix some shit. And I think that that's really progressive. I think that that's really awesome. And I feel like there's a thoughtfulness and a sincerity that went into this movie. And I would like to see more of that type of thoughtfulness and sincerity in their next movies. <laughs> So now that Wonder Woman is good, are you going to stop talking smack on all the DC movies? <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't change my feelings on the last three movies, and we'll see about these next ones. What? Why doesn't it change your mind? Uh, you know, I'm glad that Warner Brothers has, has one solid movie. Their last three, in my opinion, have not been very solid. And we will see about their next movies. As I said earlier, I hope they learned some lessons from this. My friend Bobo said that you're a Marvel employee. And Marvel pays you to say that uh -huh. you like Marvel movies. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's right. I'm a Marvel shell. That's right. Well, you did work for Marvel. Well, I hosted a show for, I mean, for them, I guess. It was paid by Disney, but that dried up real fast. It was one show, it was two years ago <laughs> at this point. All the money I had from that show has already been spent a long time ago. They'd have to continue to pay me. Pay you to hate DC. Yeah, yeah. What was the worst DC movie, in your opinion? Fuck, man. I mean, they're all so bad in their in particular ways, you know? It's like, Man of Steel just completely was not the deal at all and uh, misrepresented Superman to a gross degree, in my opinion. Then you have BVS, which was just like a mix, like 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. And then Suicide Squad was just a fucking montage. I mean, that wasn't even a fucking movie. So I don't know. I That's a tough one. They're all really bad. Thank you.
next Game of Thrones video. You're a hipster. You're a racist. You're a misogynist. You're a self-woman-hating misogynist. You think people in foreign countries are retarded. You hate DC. You're annoying, but I would still fuck you. You're a sellout. You're a Marvel employee. Welcome to Marvel's Off the Rack. Robot should have his own show. guys dune club it's totally happening my dune boxes i feel like a mother turtle my dune boxes this is an example of one are now shipping did you just say you feel like a turtle i feel like a mother turtle who's like what does that mean <laughs> i was like you lay your eggs in the sand and then you know you just kind of hope they all make it to the ocean and that's like giving your your boxes over to the usps it's just like you just hope that they get there because man those guys are brutal anyways <laughs> so here's the deal getting in a box like this. Is this an unboxing video? Yeah, it's an unboxing video. Although, our this is just a tester one. Our other one, I'll explain it. So, oh my goodness. Holy shit. Oh, fuck. It's a fucking copy of Dune. And then, yeah, we got this going on. And, man, this is so exciting. I'm really fucking proud of this, by the way, you guys. I designed this shit, because I went to art school, all right? This guy. Oh, this fucking sick ass pin. I'm gonna put it on right now while I talk to you about Doom Club. So I have a lot of people asking me about how you can join Doom Club, and here's the deal, right? All you need is this mass market paperback and the will to read it this summer with me starting in July. Uh, it's gonna be on Twitch. We're gonna do a two hour live stream. We're gonna talk about your assigned pages. Here's your assignments. We got week one, week two, week three. Uh, we'll let you know. I'm gonna post these online. They'll be on Facebook. They'll be on Instagram. They're gonna be on Twitter. This is gonna be everywhere. All right. So you just gotta go with this. Buy this book. Read it. Show up for Dune Club on Twitch. Two hours on Sundays, starting the second Sunday in July. It's gonna be live. Oh, so you have a date now? Yes, we have a date now. Things have been congealing, coming together. You know, it's a whole project that I've been working on. Yes, I've seen a lot of people still asking though, where is my Dune box? Well, it's shipping right now, motherfucker. <laughs> it's shipping right now. What's okay. taking so long? Uh, well, I, I am, we are a small company and this is the first time we've made a box like this. This is taking way too long. No, it isn't. I think we've hit exactly where we said we were gonna hit. I said they would be shipping at the end of May, beginning of June. And guess what? It's the beginning of June, so. That's right, it is a pre-order. Yeah, so, uh, and you know, people ain't, uh, my Dune Box BBs have not been complaining. They've been getting awesome fucking letters telling them all the shit that's been going on with updates and pictures behind the scenes. It's been a whole fucking thing. Although I'll tell you one thing, next time, I wasn't expecting to sell as many as they did. And I had to sign a lot of these books, a lot. And man, that took, that really took it out of me. It was like, it takes a lot of energy. It was like, you're making this talisman. So next time I think, we're gonna do like a stamp that's like property of Dune Club stamp that looks like a library slash like from Arrakis passport stamp. Oh, that's a nice idea. Thank you. I'm gonna design that too. I'm gonna design that too. And there's also gonna be more Dune Club pins that are gonna be coming in the future. I'm gonna design some more stuff. And thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. You guys are awesome. Uh, we got a lot of new guys on there, so virtual high fives. 
Because of your support, we have been able to hire Vicky, our part-time girl. She's amazing. And in fact, without her help, this shit would not have fucking happened because this chick was on it, all right? She was like fucking amazing. So big ups to Vicky, <laughs> big ups to Patreon, big ups to you Dunebox motherfuckers and all of my Fremen warriors who are coming this summer with me. What about your baby turtles? All my baby turtle dune box babies. <laughs> I mean, I really, I don't know. I, it was, I felt like ugh, giving birth energy, you know? It's, oh, it's a lot when you're get, putting all your packages in the mail. You're just like, oh, oh. It's very, it's got a lot of anxiety. In our next episode, <laughs> CBG19 reviews The Mummy on heroin. <laughs> yeah, right? We might do the mummy. I don't know. Um, I really want to do though a Sailor Moon review. Like, let me know in the comments below if you would like to see a Sailor Moon review because that's what I really want to do. Nobody wants that. No, I'm really struggling because there's all these movies coming out and like a lot of movies coming there's out. There's so many movies coming out this summer and like honestly, I just I have other things I want to talk about besides you know another I think fucking you should, Hollywood movie. I think you should review the thing that you're the most passionate about. <laughs> well, thank you, Space Brain. No, so no, so nobody sweet. wants to watch that girl oh, stuff. Well, it's just, you know, people on the internet, they like topical stuff and like that works and it helps to get us hits. But at the same time. Yeah, shut up, Space Brand. You're going to you blow know. our subscribe. The, the 10 subscribers <laughs> we have left, you're trying to blow. The, yeah, the 10 subscribers we have left. Um, no, I feel like, uh, I don't know. I, you know, we're all talking about Wonder Woman, right? Like this, talking about like, Wonder Woman has been in the media a whole lot. And they're like, oh, she's the, the number one female superhero. And I've been thinking about that, and I'm like, Wonder Woman is not the number one female superhero. Would you like to know who the number one female superhero is? It's motherfucking Sailor Moon, all right? It is Sailor Moon. She outsells, like, fucking everybody, what? okay? She's like, Sailor Moon is uh -oh. so iconic. Like, so many girls have actually, like, more girls are into Sailor Moon than they're into Wonder Woman. Oh. That's a fact. That's not true. She is the true female number You're making up friend. things. I'm not. I'm sure not. I'm sure not. So I want to talk about her. I think she's pretty awesome. And I think it'd be neat to talk about the planetary symbolism and how, you know, the metaphysical properties of the planets are represented within the scouts that, you know, are tied to their planet. One thing about the dune box, okay? I promised it was going to look like this when it came in and it's totally not because this thing might get smashed in the mail. Oh, you're a liar. No, we did this test and I'm afraid that these pendants are gonna get smashed because they're real glass. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the pendant in with like this guy and the string and you're gonna have to like put a string on it yourself and then you can either tie this to your bookmark or, you know, what I like to do and this is what I think that you should do because again, I feel like this is a very like alchemical thing that we're doing together. I mean, like reading a book like this together with like thousands of other people at the same time, like that's really fucking cool, right? But you know what's even cooler? Is when you got the squad necklace, all right? And everybody puts it on and all you do, and it's just a cord, there's no like deal, like there's no clasp on it. And then you just like tie it, like you just tie it in a simple knot, you know, and you can make it longer or shorter, whatever you want. And then that's it. And you can't take it off. Like, that's the thing. Like, I want you to wear it through the summer. Like, I want everyone to wear their dune pendant, at least for the three months if they can. I mean, I've been wearing mine every day and it's pretty sick, so. And then like, if you see someone else, can you imagine seeing someone else out, out and about and they're wearing it and then you guys both know you're in fucking dune club? What? Yeah, and then you can talk about it together? Ooh. I mean, I think that's really cool. I think it's a really cool idea. So I hope you guys Wait don't mind. Where's my necklace? Well, you don't have a neck. <laughs> Oh, and neither again. do you, Space Brain. No, you, I'm the only one with a neck around here. You're, you're hoarding all the spice for yourself, just like you hoard heroin. I need to. I need to make one for Beans. Actually, I need to make her like put one on her. Like she doesn't wear a collar. She likes to be naked. Beans is a naked cat. Sorry, Beans. You're right. So, why do you hate the DCEU? I don't hate the DCEU. Like I think that they've made some shitty movies thus far, besides Wonder Woman. I guess the world will never know.